Hi there and welcome to 4 Minute Answers. In a recent video, we talked about how to get emails into Notion for organizing and saving. And we received a great comment from viewer James Hansen, which was really helpful. And that was to use a Web Clipper extension. Now, Jim is absolutely right that Web Clippers are great tools for emails or any web-based pages you want to save and organize. And Jim recommends the Save to Notion Web Clipper. But Notion also has its own Web Clipper. And in this video, we'll examine both of them so that you can master Web Clippers in Notion. So let's start with the Notion Web Clipper. Now this clipper is supported in Safari, Chrome, and Firefox. And you can download the extension at the appropriate store for those browsers. For Safari, the Web Clipper icon shows up left of the URL. And in Chrome, it shows to the right of the URL. Now I'm not a Firefox user, but no doubt it's easily viewable there as well. And when you open the extension, it will ask you to log into your Notion account. And once you do, you're all set. Now that your Notion Web Clipper is set up, let's say you hit a web page or even a YouTube video that you want to save. And while you're on the page you want to save, just click that little Notion icon near the URL. And then you'll have the option of where you want to save that link, which database you want that link to go into. It's that easy. For me, I'll just save this in my inbox in Notion. Now, if you're using an app, your ability to use the Web Clipper is dependent on the app. For example, if you're on Apple News and you see an article you want to save, uh, if you're on mobile, you actually can click the share icon and select Notion there. However, on your laptop or desktop, Notion isn't an option. So you would need just to copy the link and add it to Notion. We'll get to saving emails using the Notion Web Clipper in just a second. But if you like these quick videos to help you get from Notion novice to pro, please give a thumbs up, subscribe, and share it. YouTube will love it. Now, for emails, just log into your email, bring up an email, and then click the Web Clipper tool, and it will ask where you want it to go, just like a regular web page. Now, there are two things to know, though, for emails. First, after you bring the email into Notion, you still don't want to delete the email from your email program. You can archive it, but if you delete it, the email link is broken. Second, you need to be using the web version of your email program for this to work. If you use an email application like Apple Mail, the Web Clipper doesn't connect to it. Now, let's look at the extension Save to Notion, which is available for Chrome and Firefox, but not for Safari, at least at the time that we're recording this video. Now, the Notion Web Clipper is simple. It brings over the URL for a page or email. You can decide which database in Notion to drop it into. The Save to Notion Web Clipper is decidedly more complex and fully loaded and allows you to bring in the URL plus images, descriptions, properties, and just about anything else so that when you drop it into a database, you don't have to then go into Notion and make those changes. It comes in all set. So let's see it in action. Let's say we're looking to buy a house in the greater New York City area. So there's content I would want to organize, like possible houses from Realtor.com or Trulia or Zillow as well as any articles about the market area uh, that we're considering, plus articles about remodeling since we may end up with a fixer. So first, I'm going to set up a page in Notion called House Hunting, and I'm going to add three databases. One is a database of the houses itself. The second is a database of articles that are helpful in understanding the market, and a third database of articles related to remodeling. Now, for the houses database, I set up a bunch of properties, price, bedrooms, bathrooms, etc all the data that could be useful for sorting and searching later. And as you can see, I've set it up as a gallery view so that I have a preview picture of the house. Now for the market articles and remodeling article databases, I just set up a simple inline table database where I can drop the URL as well as the source, author, date, and, and a highlight if there is a sentence or two that I want to call out. Now, we're assuming you know how to set up a database in Notion already. But if you want to know more about how to set up databases in Notion, I'll add the links in the description below. So now we're all set. We have a page called House Hunting with three databases included on it. So now let's download Save to Notion, and I'll be using it on the, on, uh, as a Chrome extension. And the little icon of a paper airplane, at least it looks that way to me, is now in my extension section to the right of the URL. Now when I am on a page of a house that I'd like to consider, I will click on that extension, and from here, just select the database that you are interested in having this page connect to. Now here's the fun. The first time that you try to connect 
uh, try to connect, say, the Notion to a database, you have an opportunity to set up a form to capture all the properties that you have in your Notion database so that when you're ready to send it, you can pre-fill everything for your database. Now, you'll want to create a form template, and that's very easy to do. And then add all the properties that you want to add here. Now, when you want to save a page to Notion about a house, you can call up this template, answer those questions, send it to Notion, and then keep going. Keep looking for more houses and just keep doing it again and again. And when you go to Notion, all the houses will be there with all the information that you want. And as you know from prior videos, you can sort this database by any property. So if you wanted to sort by city or by asking price or by the number of bedrooms, you can. You can do a similar thing with the articles database. Find an article, click on the icon, and then you can set up a form to match the properties in the database. And once you do that, every time you want to save something to Notion, it's a piece of cake. Finally, emails. If you're a Notion user, you have databases for tasks or action items, for travel confirmations, for articles to read, for recipes or meal planning, for all sorts of things. And all you need to do is to have the email up on Chrome, click on the Save to Notion app, and then bring it over just like the other articles. Now, in each database that you want to connect it to, you'll have an opportunity to create a form. Uh, so that way you can collect all of the right information before it goes into Notion. Now remember though, just like with the Notion Web Clipper, you can't just delete the email. You can archive it, but if you delete it, the link breaks and it doesn't go anywhere. So if you go to click on the link in Notion, you won't get your email. And Save to Notion doesn't work if you're reading your, your email on an app like Apple Mail. So now you know how to use the Notion Web Clipper and the Save to Notion Web Clipper to save and organize key web pages as well as emails in Notion and both are free to use. Well, if you've got suggestions or questions about this or any other video, please add a comment below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.